What's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today. As you can see, we got some more Duramax goodies coming right your way. Uh, after doing a couple of the performance upgrades on the last Duramax video, we've kind of found a couple of little shortfalls with it. And the first one, obviously, we kind of knew this going into it, is going to be the transmission. So we're going to do it little bit by little bit. Eventually, yes, we will go to a full trans build on this thing for you guys, and we're going to show you every step of the way. So the first little upgrade that we're going to be able to do for you guys is we're going to be putting a shift kit in there. This is a Transgo, uh, I believe it is a SK Allison Transgo Junior shift kit. It's got a couple of valves in it, got a couple of springs that we're going to change out. It's really not going to be that hard. We're going to show that even you know the DIY weekend guy can uh, get this kit all done. It's not that hard at all, so stay tuned. So what exactly is a shift kit and what does it do for this transmission? Uh, Transgo says this is supposed to fix and reduce the driving complaints such as uh, a couple of different codes when it goes into neutral under high boost conditions. Uh, the two, three shift, the three to four shift under high boost is, you know, has issues. They say that it also gets stuck in a gear, uh, sets different trouble codes, and it's supposed to just in general shorten up your shifts and make them nice and crisp that is so that's what i'm hoping it'll do it'll be able to hold those clutches a whole lot easier be able to keep me from you know burning this thing up too fast like i said i know we're eventually going to do the trans uh full rebuild and build on it but hopefully this will get us through to that time and give you guys an idea of what it'll do so first off, we're going to have to be draining the fluid out of here. Now, because a couple of months back, I did change out the filter, the fluid, and everything on the trans, I'm going to be saving what I have in here. So the first thing we're going to need to get to do is a uh, 15 millimeter to drain our fluid out of the Allison trans here. They do make it nice that they do have a nice um, drain plug right here to be able to drain everything out for you. So you don't have to, you know, drop the pan and get this super big old mess everywhere. So that kind of makes it nice for us to be able to get started. So we'll get this drained out. And then there's, it looks like, let's see, four, eight, uh, 12 or 13 of these uh, 13 millimeter bolts to be able to drop the pan here. So we're gonna drop that so we can get access to our valve body. There we are guys, we got our pan all dropped. Now we've got access to our sump filter, which we will also replace because I didn't replace that one when I did the fluid and filter change. Uh, we're gonna get the little gasket off here. The factory gasket is a nice hard rubber gasket with uh, metal uh, rings around where the bolts go. So that is actually gonna get cleaned and reused. So let's just set that one off to the side. And then we're gonna get this uh, sump filter off doesn't look like it's going to be too bad. And then I'm going to put a picture up onto the screen of the bolts that you're going to want to remove to be able to get that valve body out. So now that we dropped our sump filter off, now we're going to be taking off our harness and we're actually going to be leaving the harness in the vehicle. It's kind of just going to, you know, hang down back here and we're going to be able to take all these clips off. So you've got kind of one hidden up here, two, three, four, five, six solenoids, one's solenoid is up here one of the sensor connectors is this blue one right here and then the larger uh, looks like six or eight pin is here on the back side so we're going to be taking all of these off and then this whole harness will just kind of swing back out of the way
also there guys there's these two little tabs that are right here we'll see if you can see it right here that hold that harness connector into place and it's actually held in by these little pin clips we're going to put those back in because they also hold those solenoids into place So there up on your screen, I've got a picture from the Allison manual and the highlighted yellow bolts there are gonna be the ones that just hold the valve body into the case. The other ones we're gonna take apart later once we get the actual valve body out, but right now we're kind of just taking the valve body down out so we don't wanna have to take out more than we really need to. And then back up here, We've got the two other gold colored bolts right here that hold the spring retention in for the shifter. So we're gonna take those out first. And then take our spring retainer here for the arm out. there in that arm now as we're lowering it there is a pin that goes into the little shift arm make sure you get that one pulled the toward the driver's or the passenger side out of place you can see kind of right here that little shift arm that's going to be pulling out towards the passenger side so now that we got the valve body out here on a work surface, we're gonna be taking out all the rest of these eight millimeter bolts, except for we don't need to take out this little gold one right here. guys the two halves are separated uh, it took a little bit of prying because there is dowel pins that go on to the bottom side here I kind of like to leave all these bolts into place but those dowel pins you'll kind of just have to wiggle back and forth to get everything separated and so we've got the upper the lower and our plate so now what we're gonna do we're gonna work on our upper case half here we're gonna pull out one two three four five of these bolts out of place the one that has this tube that goes across here we need to pull this plate and this connecting tube up out just takes a little bit of prying so there's our crossover tube and then this plate right here will come right up out of place and that's actually what holds in these two solenoids that we're going to be working with so then there's going to be two springs that are right here and you'll kind of really want to be very careful also because there's two plungers probably won't be able to see but right here that's right underneath those springs those plungers push up on the springs so make sure we don't lose those so now what we're going to be replacing is we have our a shift solenoid valve and our b shift solenoid valve uh, without flipping it all the way over and losing all of our screws we're going to just going to set it up on end here to be able to get access to these valves and they're going to be a little bit tricky there we go actually just use the little screwdriver here grab the end so that's going to be the one end to the valve on the a side there should still be the actual valve mm -hmm. there. there should still be a valve in there this is just the end plunger and then there is the B one as well. And then these what do you think the tolerances are that they'll just fall out? So we're going to just going to kind of put it down onto the end here and we'll get these to fall by prying just a little bit to get them to fall out. Just like that. There we go. 
So next we're gonna be kind of drilling out some of the relief, the drain holes in our uh, spacer plate right here. The kit comes with this 0.125 inch drill bit. I believe that's close to like eighth inch. So on the actual plate here, you will then flip it over and it will be this tiny hole right here and that tiny hole right there. See how close we can get here. It shows it very good in the instructions, but those are the two holes, so we're gonna drill those two out. Yeah, we don't wanna get any fine metal in the transmission, so we're gonna clean these off really good, and then we're gonna get a little bit of just scotch right pad or something just to make sure we don't have any uh, edges or anything like that, and we'll clean this thing all off with brake cleaner then as well. All right, so in the kit, it comes with a pair of valves, it comes with a pair of larger springs, a pair of smaller springs, as well as a couple of check balls. Now these check balls, nothing came out check ball wise when we took all this apart. This is all added in there. So on the B side right here, there is going to be one with a ridge to it. So we're going to put our check ball in. We're going to put our small spring into the end of that and then our large spring over that one. We're going to put our other one together too. This one's going to be, go into the B valve. The other one is going to go into the A valve. Now this is the tricky part in that the spring side is what goes into there first. So we're going to kind of want to hold the valve body up with the partner and then be able to slide these up into there. Get a little bit of coating of trans fluid just to help them slide up in there a whole lot easier. And then we're actually going to reuse the end little uh, retainers that's going to go in there as well. That one will go into the B, and then that one will be there for the A. So let's get these put in. that everything is set back in there nicely into place, we're going to go ahead and put back in our two retainers. The A side is, looks like it has a spring on it and the B side does not. That one into place. And that one into place. Just like so guys. All right, so now we've got all of our valves seated in there with our end plungers. When you push on these, if you have everything seated correctly, the A1 here on the outside is going to have a harder spring press than the one on the inside. Make sure there's no binding, no you know little harsh grinding areas that they press in nice and easily. So we're gonna be reusing the same two solenoids right here. We're gonna be putting them in and putting everything back together just as uh, we just took it apart. Looks like we're all seated back together. Now, when we go to tighten these back up, they, all of these eight millimeter bolts are gonna be evenly tightened. Usually what I like to do is start in the middle and kind of work around in a circular pattern going out. All of these are gonna be torqued down to nine foot pounds. So we'll get to torquing these.
right, now when we go ahead and put this thing back up into place, like we said before, that shift arm, you gotta make sure you get it into the correct area on this shift cable, or the uh, shift area, into the notch. And then align your dowels, get it set back up in there, and then we'll start putting some bolts back in. And then actually once you get all of these up into place, these bolts are going to be the same exact foot pounds as it was when we took the uh, two halves of the valve body apart. Nine foot pounds to put all these back in as well. So next we're going to fill up the trans back up with the fluid that we took out of it, check it. We'll probably have to add another quart or so right around there. Now uh, Transgo, they also say that you need to do some kind of a trans relearn. So their version of relearning the trans, I'm going to read off a sheet right here for you. It says, start by making at least six that sets of light throttle up shifts through the gears. Next, make six sets of shifts at one third throttle, then half throttle, then three quarter, and so on. Treat down shifts the same way by starting with light throttle and working up to full throttle. When the shifts are quick and smooth, hit the tow haul button and start over with the relearn. So that sounds, you know, pretty simple at that. During the relearn, expect some clunks, bumps, and or short flares, especially during the 3-4 shift. Bumps and flares are normal during the relearn. Always do the relearn. So, seems like it's pretty easy. Relearn usually takes about two hours worth of driving to fully initialize. So, I guess we're going to have to go out driving for a little while. Oh darn! So, we'll go do that after we get her all filled up here. So now after you get the whole vehicle filled up with fluid, mine took about one extra quart. So after you save all that, it'll only take that much that you lost. Uh, you want to make sure you get it up to full operating temperature on the transmission. And on these diesels, it takes a little bit of time. So you want to get it up to at least over 100, 115 degrees on the trans temp before you start doing anything. Then you can either A, start to do the relearn, just like I said, they, for them to do the slow style relearn, or you, if you have access to a scan tool, they have what they call a quick learn function on the scan tool, which it'll, which it'll run through a couple of the solenoids, get some of the air out of that valve body, and just allows it to go through a learn process just a little bit faster. So now that we've got the trans up to temp, we're gonna be doing a couple of normal uh, quarter throttle pulls on it and we're gonna see how much better this thing shifts. This one's gonna be a quarter throttle pull. Too bad at all the shifts are actually a lot nicer especially that two to three shift it's a whole lot crisper now that I you know have been feeling this thing with the power that it has now so now we're gonna get up and try a half throttle pull very nice Compared to what this trans was doing before, adding all this power to it without having you know the proper shifting and the proper thing pressures for the trans, it was struggling a lot. This is a lot nicer, guys. Now for our three-quarter throttle pull. One two shift had a little bit of a flare to it, but when it actually engaged into gear, it was very solid. It held the gears really well. It worked pretty nice. I think we're just gonna have to end up driving this thing a little bit more. They usually say these Allison Trans like to have a couple hundred miles in them before they really start, you know, learning and getting in back into their swing before this. So we'll give it a little bit of time before we do any like real hard pulls on it. 
After driving on a little longer, I'm just falling more and more in love with this truck. With all the power adders that we're putting onto it, we're just, you know, finding those little shortfalls here and there, which we kind of already know that the Duramax has a couple of shortcomings when it comes to adding power to it. So now when we're at like full pull, uh, full boost on the throttle in like fourth, fifth gear, we start cutting out, check engine light comes on, and we got a low fuel rail pressure code. So we're gonna be doing a couple of more small upfits here and there to be able to get rid of those. And like I said, we're not gonna go into just a massive quick build all of a sudden. We're gonna go in through it step by step just to be able to show you guys the process and what you guys are gonna find in each step along the way. Well, that's about all I've got for you guys today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoy this Duramax content. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you turn on that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with cool, awesome content like this for you guys. Make sure you guys also go and check out toolheadscrate.com. We are gonna be continuing to put out month by month subscription crates. Our first one literally just went out on Friday, so you guys should be getting those here very soon. I appreciate everything you've done for the channel. Thank you, and as always, you guys stay awesome.